Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to MCAT Bytes. In this video, we'll explore the James Lang theory of emotion, an essential concept for the MCAT. Understanding this theory can get you five to six points on the psych so section, so you'll definitely want to pay attention. This theory was developed by two psychologists independently, William James and physiologist Carl Lang in the late 19th century. It proposes that emotions arise from physical reactions to events. Let's start diving into this. The James Lang theory suggests that emotions are the result of physiological responses to external stimuli. According to this theory, when we encounter a stimulus, it triggers a physiological reaction, which our brain will then interpret as a specific emotion. For instance, if you see a bear in the woods, your heart will start racing. It's going to increase its heart rate, and you might begin to shake, tremble. According to the James Lang theory, you interpret these physiological changes as fear. So that's what this little guy is doing. He's thinking about, let's go through that one more time, just because it's super important you understand this. First, there's a stimulus. You see the bear. Next, you have a physiological response. Your heart rate increases and you start shaking. Third, you have the emotional experience. You interpret the physiological change as the specific emotion. Note, it is only the physiological reaction that you're paying attention to. You don't care about the stimulus when deciding you're afraid in the James Lang theory. This is not true for other theories, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's go through another example here. Imagine you're wa walking through a dark parking garage and notice a shadowy figure following you. Well, just like before, your heart's going to start pumping and releasing a ton of adrenaline. Well, your heart won't release the adrenaline, but it'll move the adrenaline. According to the James Lang theory, your brain will interpret these bodily changes as fear, prompting you to hurry to your car. You're going to run away. So what are some critiques of this theory? While the James Lang theory was groundbreaking for its time, it faced several criticisms. One of the major critiques was that it did not account for individuals with impaired physiological responses who could still experience emotions. For example, people with a spinal cord injury who cannot feel certain physiological changes still report feeling emotions. Just because you're a quadriplegic, getting stabbed in the hand by a shadowy figure will probably make you feel afraid. Critics argue that this undermines the theory's entire premise that physiological changes are necessary for emotional experiences. Despite these criticisms, some modern studies do support aspects of the James Lang theory. Research has shown that specific physiological responses can correlate with certain emotions. For instance, studies have found that when people make facial expressions corresponding to different emotions, they also exhibit slight variations in heart rate and skin temperature. These findings suggest that physiological changes can play a role in shaping emotional experiences. For example, smiling might make you feel happier. And whenever we talk about any of the theories of emotion, I'm going to call back to this picture just so we can kind of compare what's going on. It's really helpful to compare the James Lang theory with other theories of emotion, such as the Cannon-Bard theory and the Schachter-Singer or Schachter-Two-Factor theory. The Cannon-Bard theory is positing that physiological responses and emotional experiences occur simultaneously and independently. In contrast, the Schachter two-factor theory suggests that emotions arise from a combination of physiological arousal and cognitive interpretation of the context. And don't worry, we'll spend more time diving into these in future videos. But I just want to show them to you now so you can start to differentiate what are the differences. James Lang, it's all linear. Whereas Cannon Bard and Schachter Singer both have a dual component of something simultaneously happening. The best way to learn these things is through some practice. So let's get into it. Starting with example problem one here. Say you're about to give a public speech. As you walk to the podium, your hands start to sweat, your heart races. According to the James Lang theory, what emotion are you likely to experience and why? Well, according to the theory, you would interpret these physiological changes as probably nervousness or anxiety. And then why you would experience that emotion based on this theory is because of the physiological changes. It doesn't matter that you're at a podium, only because your hands are sweating and your heart is racing. Now let's do one more with example problem two. Say you're watching a horror movie and during a jump scare, you notice your heart pounding and muscles tensing. How would the James Lang theory explain your emotional response? Well, just like before, this theory would suggest that you interpret these physiological changes as fear caused by the jump scare. And hopefully by this point, you're kind of rolling your eyes saying, Breton, that was super easy. Good, I want this to be super easy so you don't miss these very, very low hanging fruit points when it comes to test day. So hopefully we have belabored enough on the James Lang theory that you will never miss a question on it ever again in your life. 
But beyond that, it's a pretty fascinating perspective on how our bodies and minds interact to create emotional experiences. While it has its critics, the theory has significantly influenced our understanding of emotions and continues to be a vital topic for the MCAT psychosocial section. Remember to think about the sequence of events, stimulus, physiological response, and then emotional experience. Thank you so much for watching this episode of MCAT Bites, and I'll see you next time.